Hi, I'm Amy. Hi, I'm Brittany. And you're watching Homemade Homicide. We like to cook and talk about murder. Fuck yeah, we do. So join us, will you? <laughs> <laughs> So today, uh, we're going to do a really simple uh, weeknight meal. Doesn't take long to put together. I call it my white girl enchiladas. I don't know if we should say white girl enchiladas. Can we say white girl enchiladas? Yeah, I think so. All right, white girl enchiladas. Okay. okay. They're my white girl enchiladas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. She's got gloves on. I'll wash my hands. Yep. They're not really enchiladas, but whatever. That's why I call yep. them white girl enchiladas. So, and we're going to talk about William Devin Howell. Yes. Who, he's creepy. Most murderers, I think, are creepy, but yeah. he's pretty creepy. Kind of assholes, but yeah. yeah. exactly. Whatever. So, okay. we're going to start out, I got to chop up an onion and uh, some cilantro and get a few things ready. This is an easy uh, meal to put together, like on a weeknight, and I think you will enjoy it. So let's start with William Devin Howell. Uh, this guy was born in 1970 in uh, Hampton, Virginia. And it's kind of interesting. So they did a like a um, they did like a jailhouse interview of this guy. Mm -hmm. And he basically said, you know, I had a good childhood. I love my parents. They love me. Um, you know, I had he wasn't, friends. He wasn't beaten. Or... No, he wasn't molested, beaten. He didn't kill little animals. I mean, he was just, you know, he had a really good childhood. And what he likes to say is he didn't fit the serial killer mold. Oh. Whatever, whatever that might well, be, right? Well, good for him. I hope so. That got him really far. Exactly. So, so anyway, so... Um, he winds up in the early 90s, you know, he's in his 20s, and he starts drinking. And the, the funny thing was, was like, this is, it's so lame, like, he drove the, a car, just a car, without a driver, like, he didn't have a driver license. And so, I guess he kept getting pulled over, and a couple of times he even went to jail for it, because he'd spent, you know, he was always getting pulled over. So, he gets all pissed off about that, you know, and he's drinking and, you know, he says, well, he was really angry because he was serving jail time for the, for driving without a license. So... It's your own fucking fault. Exactly. So, in the meantime, his family had had enough of not this like shit. I haven't done that, but... Still. Yeah, well, we're not going to talk about your, uh, oh, God, that onions. Mm. Woo! Yeah. So, anyway, um... You cry about it? So... Maybe. <laughs> Jesus. So, um, his Who family, said? right? Who I told you. That? It's, that thing is. Yeah. Okay. Rough. Goddamn. I know. Right, where is your can opener? I can start. So, uh, right here in the drawer. Let me get my. Again. Best <laughs> fucking can opener in the world. <laughs> oh my God, that onion. Sorry. So, here's, <laughs> here's the cilantro. Hand me the towel and I'll wipe. The blue towel, mm. and I'll wipe off the. There we go. Kind of wipe off mm. some of the onion juice. Yeah. So anyway, he kind of burns his bridges with his family, right? And so now he's drifting around, and he he kind of goes in between like North Carolina and Virginia and Connecticut. And so during this time he starts having these fantasies of like raping women. Oh, lovely. And, you know, and just really violent, you know, type shit. So, in early 2000s, he winds up in New Britain, Connecticut. And he gets a girlfriend, starts a little landscaping business, and he's got this van, it's like blue, it's, it's a Ford van, it's an old Ford van, and it's um, blue and black. Like half of it is blue and half of it is black. It's like, you know, total, okay. yeah, total grossed out. Like on job. purpose? <laughs> well, I think. Like I, a fashion thing? Well, I think what happened was like, you know, maybe the fender got crunched. So 
they put a new fender on it and it was like black and oh, the okay. was, you know that type okay, of thing. Okay, I'm following, yeah. yeah. So anyway, so he's got this van and you know, he's doing landscaping or whatever. Well, he winds up getting in a fight with his girlfriend and so he decides, okay, you know what? Fuck it. I'm I'm gonna start acting it seriously? Hmm. I'm gonna start acting out my fantasies, you know, of raping women. So he know? gets into a fight and he's like, I'm just gonna go rape some yeah. people. He's like, I'm gonna Cool. You know, yeah. Cool story, bro. So in the meantime, he winds up um meeting this girl, Nilsa Arismendi, and it's like her and her boyfriend and um, she's a heroin addict and, um, you know, she's kind of drifts in and out with her family. I mean, she's got family and they care about her, but you know, and she, um, she's a sex worker, blah, blah, blah. So her and her boyfriend wind up, you know, like hanging out with him. They're like friends. They even spend the night in his hotel room. Right? <laughs> I <can't> remember this. <laughs> You're supposed to be slicing the olives not eating them off your fingers they're more fun to eat off your fingers whatever anyway mm -hmm. i'm with you so he winds up um they find her they, well they don't find her that's what happened so so he winds up him and this arismendi girl I'll wash my hands again <laughs> you're always right. washing your hands they wind up, they're going to leave and go to a party. And the boyfriend, you know, according to police, what he said was he saw her get in the van, this black and blue van, and they drive away. And they don't see her again, right? Yeah. So they're looking, you know, they file a police, her family files a police report, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they find him through the van because of the you know, the, the colors or whatever. Yeah. And it belongs to his girlfriend. So she's like, yeah, he's been driving it, whatever. So they find him. Oh, I bet she was pissed when she found oh, out. Oh, I'm sure. Job. I'm sure. So they find him, take him to jail, and they, they find the van. And when they find the van, they search it, and they find blood on, like, one of the, some of the cushions in the van, right? Mm-hmm. So... They test Maybe the blood. Hmm? You mean cut these? Yeah, we'll chop some of those. I need them, I need them like sliced. Gotcha. Slice. 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 Okay, now I'm going, oh, you know what? Before we do that, hand me that chicken because I'm going to, mm. uh, we're going to shred some chicken. Now, because this is a weeknight meal, you can roast a chicken, you can boil a chicken, whatever you want to do. You need shredded chicken for this. So I like to just get my... Smart and fine old chicken. I love these roasted chickens. They're the best. And I'm just going to, if I'm going to do like probably, I would do like half of the chicken. You're going to get about 10 enchiladas out of this. Okay. Anyway, so um, he winds up, uh, the blood belongs to, um, Nilsa Arismendi and so but they don't find the body so they're going to go to court they find the blood in the van and they're going to go to trial so he winds up taking an Alfred plea on this because they don't have a body but they What's have an Alfred plea okay so an Alfred plea I was gonna explain sorry shit I, I got questions all right I, know, you I do. got questions so an Alfred plea is when like they have, they don't have a body, but they have enough evidence that if you take it to a jury trial, the jury is probably going to convict you, right? Oh, okay. So what happens is you get to plea a lesser charge. So he pled this Alfred plea, which is manslaughter. And um, because again, they don't have the body, they just have the blood. So he winds up um, doing, they uh, sentence him to 15 years, right? Okay. So now he's in prison for 15 years for, for that. Um, you know what I want to do? Through the magic of video, will you hand me that bowl of already shredded chicken? Yes. <laughs>
That's the good thing about uh, television. Woohoo! Thank you. Yes. I shall move this. Yes, move that and this. So, so he's in prison. Well, um, there's a hunter, and this is in. So this was in 2007. Mm -hmm. So literally, like two weeks after he was convicted of murdering Nilsa, yeah, there's a hunter that is there's like a forest or woods or whatever behind the strip mall, and he's back there hunting naturally, and he comes up on a skull. So now he's, you know, so they call the police. The police come out. Well, they wound up, they found uh, four, uh, three bodies. So the, the, the three bodies they found were, um, they were all women. Uh, one lady, Diane Cusack, kind of a sad story. Like no one ever, no one ever reported her missing. I guess yeah. she was, yeah, she was really like estranged from her family, you know. And then there was... Joy Valine Martinez, that's a big name. Yeah. She was uh, 23 years old. She was reported missing, but not until like five months later because it was her, it was her birthday and she didn't show up for like her birthday, right? So. That's sad. Yeah. So, but at least someone reported her missing. Yeah. And then there was Mary Jane Menard. Now she was the only one that wasn't like a sex worker or a drug addict. But she was a like a substance abuse counselor. Oh. Right? So they find these bodies in 2007. So they don't know, you know, who murdered them, who put them there. They have, they have no clue what's going on, right? So in 2015, the, like, the lead investigator, and his name was James Wadwell, he decides, you know what, there's got to be more bodies in that field, you know, and so they go out and they start looking, well, they wind up finding four more bodies, okay, so, Shit. yeah, so now there's, there's four more so bodies. So then they're like, who, who the fuck are we dealing exactly. with? Kind of. Exactly, yeah. so, okay, before we move on, yes, now we're going to, since you have cut these so great, yeah, <laughs> Thank you. The ones you didn't eat. I am an expert. Yes. There we go. Uh, not yet. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna start putting these together and you just use your chicken, spread it out, your onion, spread it out, a little cilantro, Never have enough of that. I love cilantro. Pardon me. And the green chilies, which are my favorite. Oh my god, I actually put like way too much in mine last time, but they were still. I know you so can you good. can put you can put however much you want in here. Yeah. There's no rules to this. It's super easy. Then you're gonna roll it up. Let me get my pan. Okay. You know what? I can move this. There you go. And set these in here like this, okay? So we're just gonna continue to, to make these and get them in the pan. Okay. So anyway, so they find these four bodies, and um, there's like um, one Janice Roberts, and she was a transgender woman, 44 years old. There was, um, and I have a story about about him, her. There was Marilyn Gonzalez. She was 26 years old. She was a mother of two, so her kids, oh. I know. Then there was um, Melanie, um, oh God, what was her name? Camelini. Now she was 21, 29 years old. She was also a mother of two, but she um, would disappear for weeks at a time. And so, so not a good yeah. Mom. And again, like I said, all these women were all like sex workers and um, you know, drug abusers or whatever. So, you know, people just didn't, you know, report them missing. Like, you know. Yeah. So, so they anyway. Just assumed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah. made assumptions and whatnot. Exactly. So, and also they found the body of Nilsa Arismendi. Oh. Who he was in prison for, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they found her body 
with these other bodies, right? Well, in the meantime, they find the bodies or whatever. So he has this cellmate, Jonathan Mills, right? So what happened to my spoon? What'd you do with it? So he starts telling his cellmate, oh yeah, you know, like I murdered these people and you know, this is how I did it. I imagine blah, blah, blah. that's what cellmates usually do though, right? I Just, mean, like, talk about... Right. But here's the thing. Like, if you're going to murder someone, you shouldn't tell anybody. But anyway. So, he tells his cellmate all this. Well, this guy rats him out. He goes directly to the warden and is like, okay, you got to hear this. Fucking cellies. Right? Rude. Fucking cellies. Rude. I know. Isn't there, like, a code? <laughs> there should I mean, be. Obviously, it was. it's much better because those people got, you know... Well, yeah, but still. I mean, whatever. Anyway. I would think prison that rats. goes against prison code. But Jailhouse whatever, rats or whatever you want yeah. to call them. Yeah. Fuck it. So, they, um, so he starts telling him, like, so, like, Janice Roberts, right? She was the transgender woman. So, he picks her up, and he takes her to, uh, like, a grocery store parking lot, and... He's going to get a $20 blowjob, which... Back in those days. Back in those days. <laughs> that was probably a pretty good blowjob. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, as they are uh, committing the act, or whatever you want to call it... As she's filleting. As she's filleting him, mm -hmm. uh, he accidentally pulls her wig off and realizes... Whoops. You know, whoops, this is transgender female so he winds up yeah didn't I do that I thought I did, I did. <laughs> so he winds up so he winds up punching her in the face a bunch of times oh and then he strangles her so he said she was the only one that he didn't like you know rape all night long only because you know she was transgender God. and it really su surprised him you know, he wasn't expecting that. Yeah. So, so anyway, but then he told, he, so, um, Melanie, uh, Camelini, and this is pretty freaky. So he grabs her and of course all these women, you know, he's picking up like for sex or whatever and he gets her, what are you eating now? Nothing. Good God. Hmm? So he, um. He gets done, he, you know, rapes her all night long or whatever, because that's what he would do. He would get these women and he would, like, all night, just rape them all night. Ah, dude. Yeah. So. So when terrorizing. He, yeah, so terrorizing, yeah, the whole thing. So when he gets done, it's the next morning, and this is interesting, too. Like, he would take the women, he would tie them up, and he would gag them with duct tape, and he would go to McDonald's, and he would... You know, he'd have him in the back in the back of the van, and he would go to McDonald's, buy breakfast, let them eat breakfast. He'd pull out in the back of the parking lot. He would let them eat breakfast, and then he would kill them. So Melanie, he gives her a breakfast or whatever, you know, and he goes to kill her. Well, he decides he's going to hit her in the head with a hammer. So he hits her in the head with a hammer, <laughs> and I mean, it's not funny, but... no. He but fuck man. Yeah, I know. So he hits her in the head with a hammer and nothing happens. Like it doesn't knock her out. She's, you know, she seems fine. And he's like, "Oh shit." So now she starts saying, "Please don't hit me with that hammer." So now he's Why? like, "Okay, well." So he decides, "Well, then I'll just strangle you." So he strangles her, kills her. Then, that makes me feel horror. I mean, I know, I know, right? All of it is absolutely horrible, but that's so sad. Well, so then it's too cold to bury her. Oh, okay. Here we go. I know. So now he has to keep her in his van for two weeks. So he wraps her up in plastic, puts her in the van, and he's. Okay. Hang he, out with his dead body for he, two Yeah, because he's living in this, he's staying in this van. So he winds up 
Come on, I know, dude. Right? So he winds up sleeping with her for like two weeks. And then finally when it's, you know, when it's warm enough or whatever, he cuts off her, um, her fingertips and removes her bottom jaw. What? Yep. He didn't do this with any of the other ones. No. Puts them in a trash bag and throws them in a dumpster behind a store, right? And that's how he got rid of her. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, sorry, um, I'm gonna put this sour cream in here and I'm using a bigger tub than I should have. You would use probably like, um, Oh, I'm guess how many ounces are in here? You want a list? Uh, yeah, this is, um, yeah, this is 48 ounces. You really only need about maybe 32 ounces, I think, to, to make the sauce. So you're going to put in the sour cream and this green enchilada sauce, which is the shit. It is. So it good. is so good. Yeah, okay. Good that stuff right there. It is. So it's so good. And you're going to do the whole can. Okay. Yeah. Don't scamp. Don't scamp. Do on not it. scamp on this green sauce. Okay. Then you're going to take cumin. And I'm going to do probably like. Oh, a couple of spoons of this. This is like a teaspoon. So I'm going to do maybe two. I, I'm not a great measurer. But I like a lot of cumin, so you can do you can do the cumin. I like out. a lot of cumin, too. Yeah. So however you... Just taste it. If you don't think there's enough cumin, add more. But I would start out with like two, like heaping teaspoons or whatever. Okay? Cumin, onions, garlic, yeah. all of it. Yeah. Okay. Then you're going to mix this sauce up. Oh my God, so good. Okay, so anyway, back to the story. So, um, anyway, so he winds up, um, he gets convicted. And this is like in 2000, this is like in 2015, or I'm sorry, 2017, right? After he does all that. So, um, he, he, oh, I, one other thing that um, he told his cellmate, which I thought was kind of interesting, he called his van the murder mobile, and where he buried all the women, uh -huh. he called it his garden. Isn't that oh. crazy? Yeah. And he refers to himself as the sick ripper. What a fucking yeah. moron. Yeah, I know. Sick ripper. Sick ripper. No. So anyway, Don't dub yourself that shit. Come on. <laughs> I know, right? Exactly. Oh my god. That's pretty bad. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna give us a really cool nickname. So fucking asshole. I'm gonna, call, I'm gonna call myself women. the sick ripper. Okay, so this sauce is all ready. It's still weird to me that he didn't like want to murder these women. It's it's well, weird well, to me no, that he, he wasn't a serial killer in the traditional right, sense. Right, He, You know? Well, he... I need my special back. Now what you're going to do is you're just going to pour this sauce over these enchiladas. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm telling you, these are so good. Yeah. And they're very light in calories, I have to say. That shit is a lie. <laughs> lie. Liar! Okay. But it's really good, so when you're on cheat days, just... That's right. Just do it. Just fucking eat it. It's Who cares, so man? And everybody loves this. I'm telling you, it's crazy. Now, all I'm going to do is put cheese over the top, garnish with some jalapeno peppers and some black olives, and then you're just going to put it in the oven and bake it till it's nice and bubbly, so... Let me do this. Okay, so anyway, so he goes to court, he gets convicted. They give him 60 years per victim. Good. So he winds up doing three, he's, wind, he's winding up doing 360 years, right? Mm -hmm. So 
during the trial, like, he, you know, he, he confessed, but he was like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry. And, you know, he's, he's so remorseful. Like, even one of the family members was kind of like, you know, he, he really seems remorseful, but even so, you know. Well, if you're that remorseful, maybe don't fucking do it in right. the first place. How about well, that? And he did say that murder was not the end game for him. Like, all he wanted, he said, his actual words were, it was about the rape. Like, all he wanted to do was rape these women. He didn't really, you know, I like to pile on the cheese. Um, he, you know, he didn't, uh, he didn't want to kill him, but, I mean, he didn't want any witnesses either. So, in a, um... It's not any better. <laughs> well, It I doesn't know. make it any I better. I know, but... So, in a jailhouse interview, they, um... He says that... That he, you know, again, he's very remorseful. And he wishes that he could trade his life for all these women. Oh, I'm sure. You know, that he... He would gladly trade his life or whatever... But then, in the same breath... He's a nice man. Right. In the same breath, he turns around and says, Well, but um, if I was still free, I'd probably still be killing people. <laughs> so, it's like, okay. Dude. Oh, I feel terrible, but I, you know, I, I'd yeah, do I it again. Yeah, I feel really bad, but I'm sure I'd do it again, so... Yeah. I don't feel bad enough to complain. Exactly. Stop. Exactly. So, okay. So, here is our finished product. I'm telling you, make these, and everyone will think you are a genius. These I are, can smell the jalapeno juice, and it's so good. I know, it's so good, right? Mm. And it's easy. I mean, you know, it's one murder story, and you're done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, then in 2018, when he's in prison, he's got a new cellmate, because, you know, the old one was kind of a rat. <laughs> So, he had a new cellmate. Well, this guy, like, um, trafficked in, um, like, sex trafficking of little boys. And so, he hated this guy. And so, they wind up, can't stand him. This guy, like, he, I guess he talks a lot, and he's always talking shit, and he just hates him. So, he winds up, I guess the guy was complaining about, um, oh, he was complaining about, um, Going, having to go outside, he, you know, he, he wasn't outside enough or something. And so it really pissed him off. The cellmate or? The uh, cellmate. No. Like he wanted to be outside. And so he was complaining about, you know, oh, I just, I want to be outside more or whatever, you know. You're trafficking kids. No, you yeah, should have fucking exactly. basement. So he beat the shit out of him. Like, I guess he broke his nose, broke his eye socket, did all this stuff or whatever. So is Howell fancying himself like a Maudsley type? I, like Robert Mosley? I don't know. <laughs> we kind of like Robert Mosley. Yeah, Mosley yeah we kind of do like Robert bit. Mosley a little bit. Yeah. This I doesn't, mean, sadly though, it doesn't change the way I feel about Howell. I think he's still kind of a, yeah, he's, I a think he terrible just, human yeah. being. So, but he, so he um, kicks his ass, gets in trouble for that, but he fancies himself, you know, well, you know, the guy was like a child molester, so, so it's okay. So, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to fight him on it, but... I know. You know. You know, whatever. <laughs> You're not a good guy either, Howell. Just something to do, I think. Yeah. But that is the story of William Howell and his murder mobile. Oh, God. <laughs> right? Fucking murder mobile. <laughs> These guys are crazy. What an idiot. So, okay. And here's our finished product. So, this just goes in the oven, 350. You just want it bubbly and melted. The chicken's already cooked, so you don't have to worry about that. Just get it nice and hot. Probably like 20, 30 minutes, maybe. Okay. You can kind of check it after 20 minutes and see what you think, okay? So I'm going to stick this in. in the oven here. For you. And again, YouTube magic. Here's the finished product. Look at that. Nice. Okay. And then over here, so I have these that I made because these are actually going up to our local fire station because 
Yeah, we don't need to eat all these. <laughs> well, let me get a spatula. Yeah. I severely begged to differ, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Burp, burp, burp. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh my God. <laughs> I've been waiting for this all morning. So I hope you enjoy the story of William Devin Howell and join us next time. We'll be talking about murder and cooking something good, right? Yeah, we will. These are so good. Oh my God. Mmm. Isn't that to die for? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs>